Hey everyone, welcome back to another Go With The Flow, the series where I teach you ServiceNow Flow Designer with as few edits as possible. 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 Today we are going to take another example of something you would typically do with code, but instead we are going to make a simple, reusable flow action that can be deployed to anybody who uses Flow Designer, including low-code developers. The use case is going to be firing an event. Now developers are already familiar with GS Event Queue and GS Event Queue Scheduled. If you're not familiar with these development concepts, there is gonna be in the top right corner a prompt to two videos that I've done on these topics. They will also be in the description below. Be sure to watch those, it'll give a ton of context to this video. That being said, events are super awesome. They allow you to trigger conventional notifications because I hate using send email from Flow for reasons we'll get to in another video. Second, an event can trigger a script action, which is basically like a business rule that runs off of events. And third, events can be scheduled into the future with event queue schedule, which is also awesome. Now, experts might be saying, Robert, I don't need a flow action to create an event for me. I could just use an existing flow action called create record and dump the record into the event table. And you're absolutely right, you can. However, you are probably somebody who is very intimately familiar with ServiceNow behind the scenes in the back end. You might understand how that table works and how to instantiate records into it. Um, but others might not. In fact, most developers probably won't because they're using the GS event queue and event queue scheduled functions in order to uh, dump to that table in the first place. So yes, you can, but it's kind of ugly and it's not something that we can simplify for other users. So we're gonna create a simple reusable flow action. So here we are at our little flow action home. We're gonna click new action. We're gonna call this create an event. Let's figure out what kind of things an event needs before we start developing the action. According to this page on docs, which I'll have a link for in the description, uh, using the gs.event queue requires the event that you wanna trigger, the record it is triggering from, in this case current, and two parameters that you want to load into the event. Now, if you watch the two videos I posted earlier on event queue, that's going to make a whole lot more sense. If you don't, please go watch those videos. I've gone ahead and I've created an event just for this exercise. I called it incident gone critical. I'm imagining some kind of world where we may want to trigger some kind of event driven notifications if an incident works its way up to a priority one. Okay, let's go back to our flow action and start establishing inputs based off of what we know of the event. So we know for sure that we need to have the event name. So let's call it an, let's create an input called event and it's gonna be a reference. And it's gonna be a reference to what? It's gonna be a, a reference to the event registry. So we can pick an event as an input. So I'm looking for the table of event reg, there we go, event registration. And we need to make that mandatory. Otherwise, why are we doing this in the first place? Then I'm gonna create another variable called table we're not gonna keep this all the way to the end. It's just something that's gonna help us uh, troubleshoot uh, and test this, which you're gonna see in a second. And that's gonna be of type table. We're not gonna be needing that mandatory. Now we also know that we need a record to, that the event triggers from. So let's create an, uh, an input called record and it is going to be a document ID. A document ID is kind of like a reference, except it gives the table as well. It's kind of a way to saying, here's a record from the whole ServiceNow instance. Otherwise we'd be saying table and the tables reference. Okay, so that's gonna be mandatory because we need to have a record. Then we know we need two parameters. So let's create two parameter variables as well. Let's call it parm1, it's gonna be a string, and we're gonna create parm2, and it's also gonna be a string. Neither of those are gonna be mandatory. All right, let's save it here, and let's add a script step. Okay, so the way we add a script step is just hitting this plus sign, and we're going to script step, and let's call this launch event script. As you may have known from the previous action we created in Go With The Flow, you need to map the inputs from the main action into the inputs at the step level, okay? So it's gonna feel like you're duplicating work, but if you had a flow action with multiple steps, it would make a lot more sense. So let's just start mapping those inputs. So we're gonna create an input for the script, I like to make sure that my variables are named differently so I can tell at a glance like which ones I'm talking about. So these ones are gonna be the variables for the script. So I'm gonna say script event. 
and script event is just going to be the event name of the event reference that we've already got as an input at the top of the action. Okay, we also need the event record. So let's go script record. And not surprisingly, we're gonna drag that from our input variables, the record, bam. Now we're gonna do the same things with those two parameters. So script parm1, what do you think that's gonna be? I think it's gonna be the input variable parm1. Excellent, you're right, thank you very much. Now we're gonna do the same thing for number two, parm2, and we're gonna grab parm2. Now all of our inputs are mapped. Let's save that. And it's time to put in some scripting code. All right, so we know we wanna just trigger the GS event queue. So gs.event queue is gonna be the function. And we remember that it's got those four parameters, which we're just gonna feed it with our inputs for the script. So we've got inputs.script event. That's gonna be the first parameter. Second parameter is gonna be inputs.script record. Third parameter is gonna be script inputs.script parm1. And then the last parameter is gonna be inputs.parm2. So just like the doc said, we had an event, a record, two parameters. Inside our flow designer, we've got the event, the record, and two parameters. Let's save this. Okay, one last thing before we test. I'm gonna go back to my inputs and I'm just gonna do this thing on this record. I'm gonna make it depends on table. And this is for testing purposes because under normal circumstances, I would put this action in a flow and that flow would provide the record, which de facto provides the table. That's how a document ID works. Okay, in this case, we are going to need to explicitly tell it a table before we can select a record. And that is only true when we're testing the action. It won't be true when we're actually pushing this into a flow. So let's go ahead and save uh, and test it. Sorry, let's save it first and then let's test it. Okay, so what event are we gonna do? We're gonna do the incident.gone.critical. Again, just for testing purposes, we have to tell it a table explicitly before we can get it to allow us to pick a record. So we're gonna pick any incident that we want and parm is gonna be, this is a test, test number 001. And let's run the test. Let's view the execution details and let's see what happened in steps. Okay, let's see all the variables it came up with. So it knew the event was right, parm1 is right, parm2 is right, and it looks like uh, the record, it figured out what that one is as well. So let's go to see our event queue. Here we are in the event queue, and we've seen an event that's been created with the proper event, and proper parameter one, proper parameter two. So we know that the script action has been successful. Now let's ramp up the complexity a little bit. At the start of the video, we talked a little bit about GS Event Queue and also GS Event Queue Scheduled. You might want this event to be thrown into the future to process at a later date. And we want this action to be so simple and so scalable, we'll just ask them and if it's schedulable, we'll run GS Event Scheduled instead of GS Event Queue. It's gonna be so awesome. So we're gonna create another input here and we're gonna call this Scheduled Date and it is going to be a data type of date time. And it's also not gonna be mandatory. The game we're gonna play here is if it's populated, we know that's what they want. So we're gonna save that. So let's create another input. Let's say script scheduled. And that will be the scheduled date. We'll map that to. So if inputs dot script scheduled, and this is kind of like a way of saying, if it's true, if it has a value, if it doesn't have a value, this will evaluate to false. If it does have a value, it'll evaluate to true. So if that's true, I want to, let's copy this and let's paste that in there. Else we're gonna follow the normal instructions. Sorry, I wish this was not here. Can we collapse that, collapse this? There we go. Okay, so if there is a script scheduled date, then we wanna do event queue scheduled. 
Uh, I'm gonna save you guys a ton of troubleshooting. What I found is that you have to make sure that this thing is a date time. So we're gonna force it to be a date time, even though we said at the start that it's a date time. So we're just gonna create a variable called date assurance. Okay, and if that date variable is populated, we are going to set date assurance and it's gonna be equal to a new glide date time on inputs.scheduled. So what that'll do is make sure, 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 sure that script scheduled is a date time. And then at the end of GS event scheduled, there's a last parameter which tells you what date and time it's on. We're gonna drop our date assurance variable into that. So now what we've got is logic that says, if there is an entry in the script scheduled variable, if they bother populating it, then run GS event queue, the same way we would, but scheduled this time, and put that date assurance in there to make sure it goes to a date. Okay, let's save this. And let's run a test. Again, we're gonna which test? We're gonna do the incident gone critical. Table's gonna be incident. Record is going to be whatever incident we want. Parm one, this is a test, test 002. And we're gonna populate a scheduled date and we've got to make sure this is in the future. So I'm gonna pick like June 10th at 5.05 a.m. Let's run the test. Let's view the execution details. Let's see what happened in our steps. So we see that the event is a proper event. The parameters are correct. The script record is great and it understood what script scheduled was, so it should have followed the right path. The only way we're gonna know is if we go back to our event queue, let's check that out. Let's refresh it, and there we are. We have the event, we have the parameter one, we have the parameter two, and it's set to process on uh, 0609 at five in the morning. <laughs> All right, we have an awesome new flow action. Let's publish it. And now that it's published, we are going to give it a more full test. So I have created this flow called incident change to critical. And whenever an incident bumps up to P1, I want it to fire this event. So let's get rid of this old create event record where I was putzing around trying to create an event queue the hard way. So delete that, add a new action. There's our create an event action. I'm gonna pick that. Okay, so first things first, we need to pick an event. As always, incident.gone.critical. And we're gonna drag a record into there. It's gonna be the incident record that this trigger is based off of. It auto fills the table. And in fact, once you start moving these into actual flows, you can take that table out. This record is, when we drag and drop a, a record into it, we'll send all the information you need. You don't have to have that table variable anymore. So parm1, this is a test and this is gonna be test 003, and we're not gonna bother with the scheduled date this time, but this test is better because this is the action embedded in a flow, not just a test of the action itself. So let's click done, and let's save this flow, and let's run a test. Which incident record are we gonna pick? Let's pick 331, run the test, view the execution details, see the create an event, let's see the steps, it understood what everything was. It understood that there was no script scheduled date. Let's go to our event queue, give it a refresh, and there's the event. Got the correct parameter, the correct parameter, got the right incident in there, and it's processed on right now because we didn't load it with a scheduled date. And there you have it, folks. You take in everything that devs used to have to do with GS Event Queue and GS Event Queue Scheduled, and you've now empowered low-code users to use that function in their flows. How awesome is that? Meet me on the next video where we are going to talk about the proper way to send notifications from your flows. And it's gonna depend on the GS Event Queue we just built here. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. We'll see you on the next one. If you're a ServiceNow expert looking for better opportunities, but maybe your resume or LinkedIn profile isn't doing you justice, reach out to me via LinkedIn or the email pictured here as I offer both career coaching and recruitment services. And if you're a ServiceNow customer or partner, you heard that right. Robert Fedoric now does ServiceNow recruiting. With a 1500 subscriber YouTube channel and mailing list and thousands of LinkedIn followers, let's make sure your open positions get first go at the prodigious pool of ServiceNow resources. Reach out via the email picture here.